go ahead and bring the meeting to uh, to order. Uh, the chair is absent tonight, so I will take any volunteers who would like to run the meeting. I'll pass it over to whoever would be yep. whoever interested. Paul. So Paul will will be the acting chair tonight. Thanks, Paul. It's all you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to our board meeting. Uh, first item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. I do. Um, I need to add a uh, resignation. So we have a member of the. Um, the yeah. Do we want to do it there, or do you want to do it as a? Okay, that's fine. Okay, and then I've got one more. Uh, we need to either go into. Do you want to do an executive session for this first, or do you want to just discuss the uh, the bill of due stuff? Does anybody, yeah. you think any executive so session? One more, go around. Okay, and then there we will come out and most likely we'll make a, we'll make a motion. Decision. Okay. So we'll have an executive session. Um, you want to do it at the, after the? After the business. Yeah, at the very end, yeah. okay. Okay. Right, that sounds good. We can do it sooner and then when you make it come out, so can you do it, write it? We could still do it toward the end of the meeting and still have, yep. and still have you come you know, be, be here. So where do you want to put it? Um, after other business, but before adjourning. Okay. All right, yeah. It's executive session to yeah. discuss legal matters. Okay, anything else that we want to add? Just needs to be disseminated and signed. Doesn't need to be on the agenda. For you? Well, like a license like have. You bet. So we may have an executive session in the middle of the meeting, depending on what happens with the other topics that we're talking about. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So next item, a public comment or inquiry. Wait, Any, did we get did we finish the Yeah, we had a motion but no we had second. A motion, so but no second. We had a second. We had a second. Okay. All in favor? All right. Aye. So now, public comment or inquiry? Anything that's not on the agenda already? Uh, okay, so our first appointment is at 615 Holly Hill uh, Water Abatement Discussion for 23 River Street. Uh, we're a little early. Until this year, we've gotten no response. We, we haven't even 
got to the point now where we can't finish our, the project that we're doing uh, with the crushing uh, load of, of taxes, insurance, water, sewer. And all we're trying to do is find some way to get back on track with this. You know, we're out of an hour so here, I think we're $2,600 in arrears, which we've never been. It's a choice of either paying this or finishing the buildings and getting getting the units up and running and then being charged properly by you guys. You know, because there will be, the units will be filled. You know, at this point we have we took a, took a buildings that have two drug dealers in them and uh, a non tube wiring, faulty plumbing, um, a furnace that was poisoning people, and we completely redone all of that. You know, it's new wiring, it's new the lead windows with, you know, efficient windows. So now we have houses that are safe for kids to be in the building that kids can be safe in. We're not too far away from finally opening our business at 23, which is a, we're hoping to do a food business at. And with that, we're hoping to, you know, have, I, mean, I don't know how the business is going to go, but if it goes according to plan, we'll be hiring, you know, five or 10, 15 people. Um, so right now, we're kind of an impasse. If we, you know, if we pay the 2500 bucks, or 2600 bucks, we just can't finish what we're doing. And we can overcharge far more than that over the years. So I don't know if you want to try to... Polly's, like I said, she's on the high blood pressure, and I'm just going to pray for her health. So I can't make the brawn. I'm the one to do the work. She's the brain. So I just stuck with it. They're being charged. Yeah, they're being charged based on our based on our current. Uh, hey, no, you're good. You're good. Um, they're being charged based on the current fee schedule that we have, which is um, it's a one EU per unit. Um, what's the other one? They're they're both commercial prop multifamily properties, right? Five units, two fifty nine. What is five units? Only. So it, they're, again, they're being charged as um, the, the standard, um, one EU per unit right now. I, my, my complaint is so much about what we're being charged now is the fact that we've been charged over and over again. And um, and we weren't getting any satisfaction. Just, right, we're in a position now where, like I said, if we pay the bill that we've got to pay, I won't have any money to finish what we're doing. And then there will be no more, more units, and then, then we'll be sitting here next year, and I won't be able to finish. So you guys really have my future in your hands. Well, we're just trying to, you know, we have to, there's a procedure for, for the water abatement. You know, we, have to, we have to go through. Unfortunately, in the past, we, there's a lot of it that we can't. You know, we can't account for. Well, you know, no, the bills, the bills are right here. Oh yeah, no, no, I, I don't. I didn't mean by that. I meant that most of us weren't about involved in any of this in the past, so it's kind of hard to to go back there. But um, but is it really the town that's a, that's an issue? Not, I'm not, I'm not signaling anybody out. As I said, I believe it's what you guys are doing now. Yep. Responsible yep. now. I I, I what think. We're doing Gotten that response from everybody else, and I, you know, in the past, what, what can I do? Just keep writing checks. 
Yeah, and I think that's where the board is, is kind of, I don't know, struggling, but that's to me that'd be the hard part is to figure out, what, you know, we don't really know what happened in the past. You came in, it sounds like. Do you have anything, um, do you have any proof or any letters or anything that you might be able to present that says, hey, we're requesting that you reduce us to a vacancy rate or whatever the discussions were that you had in the past? Because um, I think that's what... Well, I think what we're trying to get to is that is at the point where I mean, where do we go from here? Well, I mean, you know, you're in. You're, whatever you're in. I can think of the state of it, I don't know if you're going to agree, but I lived in New York City many, many years ago, and I learned about people. Okay. Hard happens there. <laughs> the where do we go from here? All right. When we do these um, water abatement or water and sewer abatement, we usually ask that the folks involved work with the town to develop a plan. What are you looking for? And have a, a written plan, like uh, for example, um, with Mr. McCullough here. He had a, a written plan that he was going to be renovating you know, his building and was looking for, you know, I, don't, I forget if it was two quarters or six months, whatever, of abatement in order to do that and then come back online. So there was a plan kind of develop between the town and the client to be able to address the situation okay. fairly, you know, with both Can I suggest that parties. we schedule, reschedule it for two weeks from now and I would produce, uh, I, I would suggest that you also work, work with Greg and Therese on the financial aspect of it and so they can make that part of the plan too. So that it's, and then, and then come back and present your proposal, and we're, we're certainly open to listen to um, to your proposal, and see if we can do something to make this work for, for everybody. That's all we'll do. Right? Yeah, we're not. I mean, we're not trying to. So, just looking back, looking back at some of these the the transactions here, it looks like. Back then, what they were, what they did back then was, I think they would, if you had, you had five units and two of them were empty and three of them were not, they would allow you. They were allowing two vacancy rates at twenty-five dollars, and then the three bit on whatever the normal rate would be. And it looks like they did some of that. I think what we need to find out is what were they, what were the, the, what's the word I'm looking for? How many units were rented? at these different times because I'm looking here and, and just I'm back in 16 but they charge for a vacant water minimum of $25 one of those and then they did uh, a fixed water rate so there there had to have been at least well we'll have to go back and find what the rate was too but we can figure out how many of these units that's where it's gonna be tough because we don't know how many were vacant back then and how many were not and I think if we go through this, I can do the exercise of finding out when they billed you, how many were vacant, how many, how many you were being charged for vacancy, and how many you were being charged for habited. Um, would that help you at all? Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, because right now, the, the way the water ordinance is set up, there's no differentiation between right. how many you've got rented and how many you don't. Because if you think we got, you know, there's so many rental properties, so many units in, this, in the town, it's hard for the the water department or the administration to keep track of it. who's got a rent here, who's, who's vacant this month, who's not, when does it come back on. And during some of our investigation of the water rates, we found that there was sometimes those changes weren't reported. And they actually, the unit was thought to be vacant when actually it wasn't. And so we had to come up with a way to neutralize those possibilities. That, Miles of bookwork that will be happening with that. Well, would it be simpler if it was just simply on a per research basis in order to review the water? Well, we've, we've had. No, be, no, because we wouldn't submeter your units. We would have one meter in the building and that would be it. Well, you could, but we've got it's a $400,000 install, plus, we've got all the overhead costs. That's the problem we're running into. Yeah, the plus, problem, we've got base We've fees. had the metering discussions. Numerous items times, items. yeah, yeah. And, and unfortunately, the base rate that costs to get the water to your building is fixed cost. 
are almost 70% of the cost of the water. So your, own, your meter would only be impacting a, of a small percentage and the cost of putting in meters at $1,500 a piece, I think was the number we, we were quoted, would just, maybe down the road in the future, that something like that might happen, but. It's just that it's, it's, the water rates in Bethel are almost triple. But they're comparable with all our neighbors, though. Yeah, we did some studies of the area, you know, towns in the area, and we were very competitive. Um, but I don't, I'm not sure what towns you've been involved in. Well, this was uh, in Essex, Massachusetts. It was yeah. a similar size town. One of the major differences, though, is not everyone in this town. So even if the population of the towns are the same, not everyone in this town is on. similar sort of rural aspects of it. In other words, a lot of people on the wells. Mm. Right. So it, it changes not? proportionally. The number of users changes the cost across those users because people who aren't on the system don't get charged for it. I, I take it now that we're on the system, we can't get off, right? I mean, 259 no. has, has its own septic system. Paul, just to get back to something you were saying, I one of the things when I was reading through this that I couldn't answer, and I was curious if anybody, either you, because you've been on the board longer, or Mo, um, prior to our taking away the vacancy rate for commercial buildings, what was the policy? Was it per unit? So you were sort of speaking to it a moment ago, but I didn't quite grab. Policy was not being followed, actually. Okay. So the policy that we had in our water ordinance was not being followed, but what they were doing is they were they would allow vacancies for a vacant unit. So for instance, per, if per unit, okay. per unit. Yeah. yeah. So in here, I, I'm looking through this. That's what I want to kind of get into is sometimes you being charged for two units that were occupied and three that were vacant. Sometimes it was different. I just need to figure out how that shakes no out. Consistency. Yeah. And I don't know if it was based on the conversations with you coming in and telling them, Hey, we've got one empty. I, I don't know. You know, I just don't know. No, but. We, well, we, we would get rebates and then it would just disappear again. Uh, there was, there was, uh, well, I mean, because there's there's one back here in May of 17 where you're only being charged for one, and there is no vacancy rate. So I, I don't know. I, I just need to dive into it and see what what went down. Well, I would, like I said, this is probably had this episode. Uh, we've been here, I'm sure, we've been better with the things, but just didn't understand the No, I would suggest that we. Uh, get with Greg and uh, Therese and, and put together a plan of what you, how you'd like to see this happen. Um, something that we could, you know, have in writing that would suggest a timeline perhaps for what it would take to finish your renovations uh, on those units. Um, give us some guidance and some guidelines along that way. I mean, we're not trying, we want to try to work through come up with a solution that's going to be happy you know, satisfactory for everybody. Yeah, and you can, you're welcome to come in and talk to me and Therese. We can sit down and maybe go over this a little bit more and see if we can, you know, get our hands into it. In the meantime, I think I want to go through and just see how, how you were built and what that was based on and how many units were involved and just so that we have that information for the next meeting. Well, I'll see if I can get a start with Yeah, well, I don't know if there's anything wrong with the figures necessarily. I just, I'm kind of yeah, curious I mean, what we did in the past. Yeah, the figures are that, that was, Yeah, because if you look, like, February of 16, you were only charged for one apartment. So there, the other four units weren't even. Uh, oh, geez, you would ask me. 23. Well, it is only one apartment. 23 is only one unit? Yeah, that's the one on the corner. Okay. Well, then, that, see, that's why I need it. That's why one apartment. Sure. 
Okay, well, I'll have to do some, in, some reading and some uh, studying here to find out where we're at. Yeah, one apartment. So anyway, uh, you're welcome to come in and, and talk with us if you want. Well, well, Give me a little well, time to. You want, you want me to come back into it? Or yes, come? yeah, yeah, you're more than welcome to come back in the next meeting and yeah. come up with a plan. Just and try to have some discussion before that. Sure. Yeah, yeah well. I, really, all I want to do is try to come up with a plan where I can manage the apartments. Right. That's it. I don't want to, you know, I'm not looking for extra cash to go on vacation. I don't want to go on vacation, but so I haven't been to Chicago in Cleveland in a year. So. <laughs> and all I want to do so with this is. I just want to make sure here that we were billing you according whether yeah, we were fair. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so I'll do we're, we're on the same path. We just have to figure out a way to make, get a plan that's going to work out for both parties. So um, just give us a call or come in and we'll get you on an appointment. I'm not sure what time yet because I think I have another one, an appointment already for the next meeting. So maybe 6.30, 6.15, I'm not sure. I'll just have to let you know. Yeah. Okay. And we'll, we'll be getting a copy. We'll, we'll get a copy of your proposal ahead of time, so we'll be able to digest it a little bit and then we'll discuss it. Well, we did send these figures to you the last time, but it wasn't a proposal. We didn't really know what you were looking for. Sure. Yeah. Let's, generally, with the abatements, we'd like to you know, have something in writing that, that establishes a position that we, can, that we can discuss and work from. I don't know if you got to see the package that we talked about two weeks ago. Right? Oh, yeah. With all the figures in that? Yeah. It's cash money too. The more he talks about this, the harder it looks like. Yeah, I can tell by the letter. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for coming in. Thank you. Okay, we'll see you soon. Yeah. Don't forget your jacket. We do have a public comment. Yes. Hello there. Hi, Dylan. How are you guys? Good. How are you? Oh, working away. Uh, I was coming to kind of give you an update on what's going on up here, how far along we've come. Um, stuff's getting done. Uh, we got, I got the nine in there. You know, just digging the sheet rock and stuff, just stacking up. And, uh, not quite sure. So you, you were at a six month? Yeah, we had a six month two pay period. That was getting done when now? In January? Yeah, yeah. This is this is when you guys want to come back and yeah. give you a progress update and know where we're at. Um, doing both. The end of March is a good, uh, a good yeah, target for it. We're moving right along right yeah. now. Um, I did what I could, and then and I, get, I got a guy in here now to finish up the kind of finer end of stuff that I don't like to do. <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah, he's doing that London tape and stuff. And then, you know, as I said, I want to dig, dig that new line just so that, you know, so I don't have to worry about having to shut off now. Mm -hmm. Mine when it goes down. Yeah, yeah, get a hold of Tim or Greg here and yeah. make sure we know what, where's what. Yeah, I'm just kind of thinking, you know, we're, we're not using any of it, so. Yeah. Just get another, you know, I, I don't think I need another two pay periods, just one would be, nope. one would be what, what I'm thinking, so. Okay, yeah. okay. How's, what's the board think about extending the other one? Another one? We need a motion? Yeah. Probably need a motion. What do you think? So, I have a second. Yeah. 
second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Sounds good. Appreciate Keep it. Keep up the good work. Yes. Well, we... It's a challenge, huh? Yeah. I don't know why, but... Yeah. <laughs> And you're still dealing with uh, down to Piani too. Yeah, well, that's actually, the, I think that one's doing pretty well. I mean, we've been kind of joking around that one. Didn't really do too much. It was, you know, the performance was all well out of it, but yeah. uh, they let it breathe. So we'll get that back up and running. Don't know. I heard some of uh, maybe John Henry's here coming up, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Take it. This is all out of pocket so far. Yeah. And that uh, that's getting quite costly, so it's a lot of uh, lawn mowing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of lawn mowing. But right, right. now it's still okay. lawn and sand. Yeah. yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. That's great. Good luck. All right, all right. thank you so much. All right, Have take care. No, it's not on the agenda for tonight, is it? No, I'm not sure. No. Nope. We'll be working on it, though. You gotta watch it. I told you to watch the website. I told you to watch the website. It'll be on our agendas. I just lost track of Did you? Yeah, it's, that's the best place to go is the website. and just yeah. We post all of our agendas. Right. Uh, or a town hall, if you want to swing in there. I just, uh, it will be soon. I just haven't gotten to it yet. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I just, uh, that's how I lost track of Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll have Kelly give you a call once we get on the agenda. I'll have Kelly call you. Okay? All right. Sorry. Right, solution. Okay. So we've got a couple of minutes here for our next appointment. Sorry. Do you have to step open again? Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you have something you want to do? Neil's speaking about my. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Thanks. The point here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do we want to move on to, uh, let's see, the Cherry Lane uh, water disconnection? I would. Can we do that? Yep. So, Greg, why don't you? Yeah, so I don't know all of the story here, but I, it sounds as though that you've kind of got a letter here in front of you that it explains a little bit, but um, there is a trailer house at the end of Cherry Lane that uh, I believe this gentleman had lived there and he passed away in 2012 and he hasn't, nobody's been living there since. Um, the water was shut off because there was a leak out there, so we shut the water off in 2017 and this uh, individual is asking that we basically eliminate them from the from the system um, not a not necessarily a vacancy but they want to be completely disconnected from the system um, that's typically typically when you do a disconnect from the system it's it's not only is it a a bookkeeping disconnect but it's also a physical disconnect from the system there's no longer that availability of water to that lot at all if they disconnect from the system um, but that's what they're asking for so Based, based on the fact that there's that that house is not being lived in and there's I guess there's no plans to have anybody in there I don't know if it's inhabitable mm -hmm. I have no idea um, I do that. they got the curb stock and take the pipe going to the, to the uh, dwelling that's nope. the way you should be doing it you should be you should actually dig all the way back to the main and take the corp out mm -hmm. where the tap is at and plug it uh, but there are other ways to do it. But but typically a disconnect is, is actually a physical disconnect because we if you take it out, that way we're not supplying water to that property anymore or to that tap anymore. So it can't be done at two centers I said. Yes. The line cut. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much. If the if the property gets sold somewhere down the line, they'd have to buy a new tap. They'd have to right. buy the whole, the whole So what this Yes, so the, you have that option, and you have the option of just the, the uh, vacancy rate. Well, this right is, now they're on a, a vacant water minimum, $80. Yeah. 
Right. The court. Right. But what they're asking for is a complete disconnect. Right. Well, we could do that until spring anyway, right? Uh, yeah, physically, you couldn't. Um, you know, the other question is who who does it? I mean, I guess it's in most places I've been, it's not the town that does the physical disconnect mm -hmm. because they're not. But but we could, we very well could. Uh, taking somebody off of the water system is not ideal by any means. We don't want to lose our EUs. We don't want to have. We do want to have our users. Um, so you know, I just I, I just would would just think about that. Um, this definitely qualifies for the vacancy rate because it is shut off. And we know that there's nobody inhabiting the, the house. So it, it definitely qualifies for that. But a disconnection is a whole other state, for sure. Who incurs the cost of the labor to do the disconnect? That's a good question. We don't have anything in our ordinances at all about the physical disconnect. That's just industry standard, though. Is when you do a physical, when you do a disconnect, you're essentially saying, I don't want that line anymore. So that line, usually the, usually the owner disconnects that line. Um, now, the town could do it, but the owner disconnects it, and it's, it's done at the main line because now you're taking away that, that tap and that line in, in, as a whole. You're taking that away and taking away any of that availability. Just like we talked about, our, uh, our vacancy is based on that availability of water. We're taking that away completely. Um, so the code is a little bit... It basically says it's just a $25 fee to come back on the system if you wanted to. So it doesn't really read to the physical disconnect part of it, but that's really what we're looking at. That's what we should be looking at anyway. Now, if the board says we're just going to disconnect and we just shut them off at the curb stop and that's disconnected, then so be it. Um, there's nothing in the ordinance that specifically outlines what, you know, that defines what the disconnect really is. If I own the property, I'd want to keep the water there and pay your right right and then you're paying because the availability of the water is there you're paying a vacancy rate which i will do if it's my property now do they understand what physical disconnect means i don't know if they do at this point i, I so don't think they, we we've gotten to, that far honestly we need to make yeah. sure that they understand that it's a physical removal of that line and then we need to figure out who who's responsible for doing it and i would think charge of some kind, although there isn't anything right now in the ordinance. There's not. You're going to take a loader up there and start. Right. And, and, and we can't just. up that pipe, who knows what's going to happen. And we can't just start coming up with charges. They have to be justifiable. And the only charge that's in there is it just says if they want, if somebody wants to come in and connect back to the system on this line, it's $25. That's a connection fee. Maybe they ought to be made aware of this. Sure. Well, I mean, on it, yes. They qualify for vacancy. This is a this is a this is defined. What they're doing now is vacancy rate, per our definition of vacancy. That's what it is. Um, I don't know if this property. I, th I guess something else we need to check is if this property has another line. I don't know if you know if anybody's familiar with this property enough. Oh, well, Tim, you know Tim might know the yeah. lines up there or something. Taking so we, people. So we could in we could then just say no. We don't want to do disconnect you. We you know. We, you qualify for vacancy rate. If you want to incur the cost involved in doing a physical disconnect, then we'll have, you know, we'll have then we will standing. consider it. Well, yeah. consider it. Then. But I, I think it would, yeah, and I think in the meantime, yeah. I would want to find out whether or not there is actually a, a, if this is a second tap or if this is the primary tap, mm -hmm. because it's, it's not in our best interest to be taking people off of our system. I understand. Still so, there. yeah. And that place, well, I don't know how long it's been there, but it strikes me as being a real old, old, you know, been there a long time. Right. We've had a couple different trips. Is, it? is that the only it's the last house? One on that, is, is last that? one on that driveway. Well, it's it's actually, it's the last one on Cherry Lane. You yeah. go out to the end, go left. So it's the only structure on the lot, the only yeah. house on the lot? Yeah. Last time I was there. So yeah. if they disconnect, then yeah, we've got a, a lot. There's an outbuilding, yeah, but there's only this the single wide. If they disconnect, then we've got a lot in town that's got water system that doesn't have water system. It doesn't have a line to it. You would take away that, that line. Mm -hmm. And then they would have to either pay something to get back on the system down the road, or they would have to drill a well. And it, I don't know that we want to go there. 
Well, and we need to chat with them and make sure that they understand that. Well, and I think we need to establish if there is, if they decide, yeah, we want to disconnect physically, we need to just we need to establish who's going to do that, whose dime is this going to be on? Um, because it's you know not only will we, would we not only will we be losing that revenue from having that person on our system, but we're also losing would would be incurring cost of to abandon the line. So do we want to uh, bring this back up again next meeting? Maybe chat with that. Well, I I think. Um, yeah, uh, does the board agree with the defining a disconnect as a physical disconnect? Or are you, are you ready to, are you at that point or do you want to think on that? I think that's very, that's imperative to this whole thing. Yeah, if we say disconnect is simply we're just turning the water off yeah. and you know, there's a lot of people that are disconnected at this point. Right. That's why it's a little, a little bit of a slippery slope. That would be my definition is yeah. the water shut off and it's disconnected. It's disconnected from Disconnected. The availability for that water is gone. Right. But doesn't that con conflict with the way we stated the vacancy rate? Because we're turning off the water when somebody goes onto a vacancy rate. No, the so water's still available. It's there. The water's they just they're, they're, at the they're just not using it. They're on vacancy rate because they're not they're not using it. But the availability is still there. So it's not turned off. It's turned off to their building. Right. But it's and still at the. So isn't that a conflict then? Because we could have somebody who argues that they're on, they're disconnected and shouldn't pay anything more. And in one way, we're defining it that they're disconnected and don't need to pay. And in another, we're defining it that they're on vacancy. Well, there's two separate disconnects. So there's a that's why the physical disconnect is important. Right. There's either you're not disconnected if your line is still attached to your building all the way to the main. You're not disconnected. You're you're connected. You're not being served water. We still we are still delivering that water to the corp to the curb stop, right. and incurring those those fees those fixed costs. Mm -hmm. If you're disconnected, then you have no line. There is no conduit to your building. It's gone, and so there are no there's no fee there's no cost to deliver water to right. you. Which is more than just turning it off. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Which is a, a, di a physical disconnect. Yes, yeah, the conduit the is broken. Yeah, cut the right, and that that I understand. I think I'm misunderstanding which you were. I'm agreeing that the water is shut off right now. It's disconnected, according to our, our, our bylaws, right? But that's not. It's just. I don't know. I'd have to look at the at the definitions of our bylaws. I don't know if the, if our bylaw defines. Physical this, shut off or, or right? Or exactly. Shut off. That's why I'm asking this question. I don't know if our bylaws. I don't. I know that our bylaws do not say. What it doesn't define what a what disconnected is. It doesn't say the curb stop the curb stop shut off. It doesn't say you've cut the line. It does not define it at all. To me, when, when you turn the water off, the water is disconnected to that house, but not permanently. It's it's as you're saying. Right. It's so then available. So then that theory means that everybody who's the minute we take that water off that line, they can have a rebate or a, or a abatement on their property value because the water. Property value is going to go down with no existing water, so it's the snowball effect down the, sure. down the road. That's one way to so so that theory then would state that state that everybody who's on vacancy at this point is technically disconnected. Exactly. That's my my thought. Okay. But would, wouldn't that hurt us? It, I mean, it would change all of the. No, no because they're still going to get paid the the the. the you. Yeah, I think what Mo's trying to say is disconnect and vacancy are probably the same term. Okay, one of the same. That's what I was feeling. Okay. Yeah. But you're you're calling them the same. Yes. Okay. yes. Now we're yeah. That's what I, I think. That's what you're saying, right? And I think that's if there's so much vagueness in the ordinance, I'm sure it could be interpreted that way. I'm sure it could. It just it's just hard to tell. There's just it's not specific enough to really to really say either way. Um, I think that that argument could be made pretty easily. That they're one and the same. That the terms are one and the same. But the, but the minute we tear up the line there, and then we haven't got any charge there at all. Right. Well, there's an abandonment. So let's go to another term: abandonment. Okay. That means you're basically taking the line away. Yeah. That maybe uh, that's the same principle, I guess. Um, that's you're right. Order. There would be that you're basically there's no billing at all. We're just done, and that lot no longer has any water to it whatsoever. 
So the next owner has to either, well, they need to connect to the system. Um, but, and I think I have to look at CFR and it says that there's a requirement to connect to the system if it's available. I, I hope it says that, it should. Um, but the next owner would have to pay to, to put in a new line and, and do all that. And, you, and you're right, so as soon as that line got taken out, then the listers would change the value of that property. Exactly. Yes, exactly right. So, may, so possibly that's the answer. Maybe they are one and the same. But, but that is not. So now what? Right. I think we need now clarity what? from the property owner as yeah. to do they, do they want to just be disconnected and be on a vacancy rate, or do they want to remove the line? And I don't think that the town should be paying for their choice to remove a line. And they're currently on vacancy, so my guess is they want to be disconnected. Yeah, because the owner says they want to be disconnected from the water. They want to be done. We don't want to be in a water system anymore. Right. That's what they're saying. Right. But I, I'm not sure that I feel it should be the town's responsibility to front the cost of them being fully removed from it. Um, right. So I guess I, I'd want clarity from, I think they probably need more information as, you know, as to there, this discussion. I think there is, I don't know about the water, but in the sewer I believe there's a, somewhere in that ordinance where if the sewer line travels within a certain distance of your property, whether you're connected or whatever, yeah. you pay. Yes, exactly. Period. Yeah, and that's what I was... So if, that, if that's true with the water, right. even if you take it off the line, where where, where does that... It, so you're exactly right. So if that is the case, and I don't remember the ordinance well enough to say, because typically it'll say something like if the main line runs within 400 feet of the lot, you have to hook to the water you pay. system. You either hook yes. or pay, whatever. I don't remember that being in there, but I'll check again. If it is in there, then this discussion is probably a, a moot point. Right. They're required to be connected. It's just the way it is. Okay. So I, I think it sounds to me like I need to do a little more research a little more for you. More digging on it. Yeah. And bring it back to you, and, 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 and we'll, the, we'll try to maybe find talk out. to the owners too, and, and make sure that they understand. Right. The what this really entails. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I, and I think this is screaming ordinance. We need to revise that ordinance too. I need to get into that water ordinance and do a lot of work to it because it's it needs some help. So, okay, so I'll bring that back to you. All right, great. All right, Neil. How you doing? Good. Thank you for waiting on us here. I'm the acting chair You're tonight. You're the acting chair, yeah, so yeah, I guess... This is well, tonight. Um, I was charged by your board to uh, complete an inspection um, requested by a complainant. Um, you need to know that the reason she was upset, um, and for good cause, um, she called the town office sometime in October, and um, whomever she spoke with gave her the wrong number, not my number. So she was calling in October and November somebody's number, not mine, and when uh, that's why she went to the state. And uh, quite honestly, I don't blame her because she was worried about climate weather and wanted to get some action and couldn't because she couldn't get a hold of me. Because that was the first question I asked her. I said, I mean, I've been in this town for 50 years. Uh, most people know or heard of me and know how to find me. Um, so anyway, that, that you need to know. And, um, you very generously printed me a bunch of business cards and I'd suggest that We'll put them on their desk, so get the right number. But anyway, uh, I went up there a week ago Friday and uh, had a very nice visit with the uh, residents in the home and the landlord. Um, the uh, forms that they sent you were for. for residential um, 
which are a lot more in detail than what are normally required for a mobile home, but the forms that will be sent then to the state and given to those people are detailed and more de detailed than her. So anyway, um, the, the, uh, the property is a 1978 mobile home, four years old. I would guess that in its day, it was a very nice mobile home. Uh, two bed, uh, three bedrooms, two baths. Um, age has taken its toll on it, and it needs some work. Each of the um, complaints that the person made were, in my opinion, very valid. Um, And uh, I, I don't know where he, the landlord got the idea that he didn't have to do anything until, until he heard from me, but that was his reason for not getting started, uh, getting moving with the, um, with, with the required uh, corrections. He was very cooperative with me. Um, I'll tick them off for you if you like. The first was the most serious was the, there were no smoke or, 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 or no detectors at all. They had been removed. Uh, and I go through this in my apartments all the time. The tenants don't want to hear them, so they take them down and they end up near the wastebasket and then they end up in the wastebasket and then they're gone. So he was going on a trip that he, the landlord, so when I talked to him the first time, um, I said, no matter what you do, before you go on your trip, get those detectives in there. There's a husband, a wife, and two children. And uh, he did that. And he had, they had not made a complaint, but he had acknowledged the fact that the kitchen floor, or the requirements of the kitchen, kitchen floor, or the kitchen or bath floors, if they not be permeable, but they'd be, you know, so water doesn't soak in there, and, uh, and, and the, the floor was bad. It, it was mainly due to wear. Uh, he has on hand the material to begin the recovering the floor, but he was away, and the holidays got away, and she didn't really want the, that much disruption then. So that's all good to go, and that will. That may have started by now. Um, the third issue was mold in a closet. Uh, and it was indeed black mold. Um, that, that's the hazardous type. And it was a spot um, half the size of your hand. Um, I have some chemicals that I use and uh, I've got to go up tomorrow because the, the uh, I needed to take some pictures and I was there till after dark, so I, I told her I'd bring her this mold remover. And um, but the, the 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 mold that she well not the mold but she thought it might be mold was around the kitchen counter, and that just just needs a good scrubbing. And that's, uh, that old uh, plaster stuff that used, comes together and there was a metal bead uh, instead of putting, uh, you know, uh, like you do today, uh, some kind of a super glue, that, that metal stuff, and that, that just needs a good cleaning. So we're all set on that. The f the f ceiling in the um, in the closet that she's concerned about uh, I just suggested that do what you can now to get rid of the mold but replace the ceiling it's like um, four by five piece of sheetrock um, tear that one down put a new one up and that'll solve that problem. <coughs> Um, I can't remember every one of her 
Well, I, I think the question that I have, Neil, is you, you had the form there. Were you able to go through that whole form? Oh, yeah. And give them timelines for repairs and give a copy of that to, to the tenant and to the landlord? Who are you pointing to? The tenant. And the landlord is like a 12-page... I, I, I thought I recognized you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's my place. It's my place. Yeah. Tell me if I'm saying anything wrong, okay? I don't remember anything about a kitchen counter or anything like that. I thought you mentioned a kitchen counter or just on the left hand side by the sink. Nope, nothing about the sink. Well, I went then we. My main I concern was my kitchen wall where my one and a half year old son went through because it's so rotted. And our closet, which is awful, unbelievable. Our bedroom floor, which has dropped from the wall about two inches, and you can see the outside. It's mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff. It really is, and we got we got pieces of our ceiling falling down. Would you mind coming up here with me? Sure. Um, I sent pictures. Yes, we, we have. have them. We have them. Yeah. I'm Megan. <laughs> What's your name? Megan. Megan. Mayo. Hi, Megan. Hi. So, but Neil, the, the, what we're trying, you know, we have, we know, we've seen your pictures, mm -hmm. and we know the history that led up to this point. And part of that history was the Department of Health emailing through Greg that we needed to get this, there's a formal process, you, you've done this long enough, you know, there's a formal process where you do this 12-page inspection, which covers everything from electrical to sheetrock to plumbing to septic to structural, you know, all that stuff is covered with timelines and due, due dates by when this needs to be done, you know, and all that. And, and so that's, um, were you able to do that form, like completely do that form and then give copies of it to the tenant and the landlord, which is the process that has to take place. So what are you saying to me? Did you complete the 12-page form and give copies of it to... I completed the 12-page form. And give copies of it to... I did not give copies to okay. them, uh, and I didn't for this reason. We sat in our last part of our meeting, your husband and I, and the... Uh, Landlord came to an agreement, and I'll, if I may, I'll read to you what we agreed upon. And um, this, this is the facts about each of the violations, in addition to what I've told you. Matt, her husband, Megan, the landlord, and me agreed to the following corrections of each item to commence on or before 04-15-19. One, replace, repair, and or line the front door and sill. I haven't gotten that yet. But I think from my observation, uh, it looked like they, an attempt had been, been made to do that a year ago or more. Maybe I'm wrong, but it, it was a, a fairly recent attempt. It, it was not sufficient. It needs to be completely replaced, and that needs to be aligned, and it needs to be, uh, so that's what I said, replace, 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 repair, or align the front door and sill. The door doesn't close tightly, so that is, uh, it, it's exposed to the element. Is that what we agreed on? Yep. Uh, the second, item was to repair and or re replace and or repair the dining area window and wall. The windows, the, the sill and the casing around the window is bad. It either needs to hit the whole window and I can't tell because I'm not a carpenter, but you've got you to either replace the window or replace just the sill part and make it airtight again. And because it is not now, uh, 
water gets in there and it has affected the wall underneath it. So that's why I'm saying the wall and the, uh, and the window has to be repaired or replaced. There's another area of consequence that is very similar to um, the dining area, and that's, I, th I think that's the master bedroom behind your bureau. Yes. Yeah, uh, that's where the floors drop down and the wall is very soft. That's, that's all the same situation, really, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it? Well, you can see the outside from our bedroom floor. The dining, or the floor, well, through the wall, I guess, because the floor is dropped. The floor is dropped about this far, and you can, I mean, you got to get down on the floor to look, but you can see clearly, like, straight outside. Daylight coming right in. But that has to be repaired or replaced, that same area. It's, it's a, similar, a similar situation to the area of the dining area. It just, it's got to be repaired or replaced. The window, and once the window and the sill is, is tightened up, then it will resolve the problem under it, I hope. I, I don't know, because the floor very big. Behind our bureau is really soft. Well, that's why that wall need, that wall needs to be replaced. Yeah. Under the window. That's what I said. Repair or replace. And that, uh, it was mine. Well, I'll, I'll get to that. Um, and I said, I told you earlier, replace the uh, master bedroom closet ceiling. And all of those four things have to be. It, the snow's up. up to the window cells, and I'm sure it's higher than that now mm -hmm. when I was there. My issue is I've lived in this trailer for four years and three months. This was all like this when I moved in, and the landlord said, well, we'll get to it, we'll get to it, we'll get to it. We're almost four and a half years later, and nothing's been done, except for my front door, which, as you've already described, didn't go up. <laughs> Well, I, I, I knew you had been there before, but I didn't even know you lived in that unit. Yeah, I've been in that trailer for almost four years, three months. Now, my suggestion, I haven't shared with you yet, but um, to the landlord, which is purely a suggestion, if it was mine, I'd pull it out of there in the spring and put a new one in there. Not, he doesn't put new trailers in, but he could upgrade that and probably with less fall, less expense, less, less everything. And he doesn't necessarily have to follow my advice, but, my, but the, the least he can do is the aforementioned four things that I've listed there. Okay, did your inspection reveal any other items? Electrical items, uh, structural, any no. other? The, no, yeah. it's an old trailer, and it's, no, it's I, really kind of yep. kind of fallen off its foundation. Um, well, I'm just wondering. Some of what we're talking about here, I, I don't know how you do it. I don't either. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't. That's why when I got thinking about it for a if it was mine, I'd pull it out. So, it needs a lot of work. I don't think uh, it's feasible, really, for anybody to get under there and replace 40 foot feet of sill. Uh, I don't know. I've never worked on it. But I can only recommend that. But at the least, the very least, these guys know what I said. And is there a completion date? Hmm? Is there a completion date? No. In mind? We agreed on a start date. Uh, I think that's been his problem. Uh, For a long time. <laughs> quite a long. You've got to get, get with it. Uh, well, he's liable for $100 per violation per day. I'm sorry? He's according to the uh, media. You're going to have to make a date that he's got to have it done. If he hasn't got it done, he can be opposed $100 per violation per day. That's correct. But with that, with that, you've got a start time, but no end time. I mean, you've got to give him an end time, I think. Well, I gave him a start date, and I thought that was a, a good word. That's why this, this hasn't gone through 
Well, she's been waiting four years. The start date might be another four years before it's done. What I'm trying to say. Done date, yeah. Uh, that, that happens more often than not. Well, then they could be fine. Yes, they were, I have that authority. Yeah, yeah but you've got, to, you've got to give them a, a date to be done by. That's why this is, this has not gone to him or to you or to you. I wanted this session, then I need to do that again. And that's can be in there. Well, it's part of the form. Uh, one of the columns on the on the far right hand end says done by. And there are certain things like smoke detectors that already have a pre printed pre printed date in there. They have to be done by fourteen days or thirty days or whatever. Some of the critical um, items. Um, but I wonder if we've done a thorough enough inspection. I, I know that's the way the form works, Reed, but it, it doesn't. It, it, I, I could give him 30 days to do something, but you, you're asking me to look there every no, month? No, I'm just wondering out loud whether or not, since we've been tasked by the state, from the Department of Health, and get the lady who, who we've been in touch with, who Greg's Megan. been in touch with, um, Meg, Meg Mc, Mc, McCarthy um, to do the the entire inspection. Whether or not we we're meeting her uh, not demand, but she's told us we have to do this entire inspection, go through this whole exercise of all the different categories, all the different things, GFIs. You know that that thing's very detailed. And I wonder whether we need to do that because she is now, the Department of Health is now involved in the, in the process. Well, and yes, said, it, I, it, and I yes never, it's, it's an old trailer and there, and there are a lot of things that you know, I've seen the pictures. I've never gotten to that point with anybody where I had to tell them what, when they had to get something done. I've told them to get it done and they've done it. Yeah, but unfortunately, this now, been waiting four years. now that they're involved in it, I think the point was that we needed to do the exercise of the complete, um, the complete form. All the bells and whistles, all the soups and nuts. I'm not following you entirely here. Okay. You've highlighted several areas, four areas, five areas the, the, the that, were, that we agreed you know, are critical. But the inspection covers 20 areas. I'm just picking a number. 20 areas that need to be looked at, not just four or five that they agree are common hot spots that need to be addressed. Well, are you asking me if I looked at the other areas that are listed on the form? Um, I think that's what Absolutely. the health department wants us to do, do, is to go through. I mean, ask questions like, is there a sink? Is there water through the sink? Well, center? is the water potable? Is there, do the oh. toilets flush? Um, you know, it's, it's yeah, great I, detail. I, I mean, I, I can look. I, I'm, I am half bright. I can look at a sink and see whether there's a faucet there. Um, and th those kind of questions I answer quite hastily, yes, 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 yes. Uh, anything that was a no, um, and I'm just looking at life, life safety things, uh, uh, well, that, ha that happened to be the, uh, the issue about the smoke, the, the alarms, and uh, I indicated that there, there were, were not, there's supposed to be one near each bedroom, and there were not, <coughs> he, he'd already, there were not what she reported it, but you allowed he us to put them in before he went on vacation. Um, but there, does each bedroom have a window? Well, I, yes. So what am I supposed to do? Say? No, you're supposed to say yes. Yes. I mean, it's not there to say so what's no, there. It's there to identify what's not there. Well, I made a copy of wrong. this. For like, for example, a gap in the floor. Embellish it. Yeah. Uh, uh, but that, that, there's a picture of a re heat register with, like, burn marks around it. The heater gets so hot, it is literally burning <coughs> our bathroom floor. Right. So that should be on your inspection report? Is that on your, your report? No. That's that's not a that's not a question. Um, that uh, he pointed it out to me that the 
that the floor uh, had been scorched when the heater overheated and he had changed it so that it doesn't overheat anymore and he didn't change the floor. Um, Those heaters still get so hot though. Even the ones in our, our living room. I mean, our baby sat on one and had burn marks up the, the register on his thigh. Well, if you look outdoors, the furnace is running full time. Almost all the time, nonstop. Mm -hmm. We have to still, if we could open up our bedroom window, we can't right now, it's a nice shot. But I mean, if we could, we would have it open because it gets so hot in our bedroom. And just runs nonstop all the time. We're literally heating the outside. Yeah. <laughs> and the roof leaks constantly. Is that an item that's on the report? No, 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 no. Please? It's not, it's not even mentioned. And it wasn't mentioned. But roof leaks are one of the items that are on the inspection. I mean, I don't go around, you know, asking the roof leak. If somebody doesn't tell me the roof leaks, I'm not going to. Well, I know I've done some home inspections, you know, for real realty purposes. And they, you know, you intentionally are asked so many different questions about every little thing. So the forms are real helpful if you just, you know, use them as a guideline and go down through. And I think that's what the Department of Health charged. I don't know. Did you have actual conversations with the lady from the state or just the emails? Via email. I think I called, I think I talked to her one time, the last yeah. time, when she said she was going to send me the links to the forms. Yeah. Okay. I'm just wondering whether we've done what we need to do to make them happy. Also identify, you know, the important issues that need to be addressed. Yeah. So. That's just, well, that's I've been my doing this for seven or eight years, and uh, uh, the only reason I think you called the state is you couldn't find me. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I've never had the state involved, and if I've had the state involved, if you, you're, you're seemingly making this into something a little bigger than I think it is. But if you're indeed correct, I would suggest we have the state come down and do an inspection. Well, I don't know. I don't know what the... I just... I'm looking at the e the email chain that we have. I don't see I don't see the the, the, the problem in her email. She just asked that the health officer do an inspection. Right, but the only reason it came from the state is she contacted the state. Mm -hmm. And then that's the way the system works. You know, they can't. If, Tell me if what you can't, want. If you can't contact, um, I I don't know what we want. I mean, I'm just asking questions. Whether or not we. You know, given done the done the due diligence that we were supposed to do. I just, uh, we haven't done this before, so it's kind of new. And I want to make sure that we're crossing the i crossing the t's and dotting the i's. Are you, uh, how do you feel about the, the state of the inspection and all that stuff? Are you satisfied that we think we're going to be able to address these issues? I don't think anything can be done. I really don't. I mean, the flooring, the, our kitchen floor that Neil had uh, told you about, it's in rough shape. He's had that flooring for about a year and a half, sitting over in an empty trailer. And I mean, like, he, I didn't get into it with him because, <coughs> I mean, look what happened that night. That was awful. All the yelling and screaming. My 10 year old ran out of my house crying for my grandmother's. And, not going to get done. You like this job? Um. I, I think Mo had the right idea. I think if nothing more, we do nothing more. We need to ask Neil to, in his form, set deadlines. Reasonable deadlines. Say that again, David. Set, the, set deadlines. I mean, the smoke detectors had X amount of time to get them in there. The floor needs to be fixed by whatever. I don't know what those dates are, but I don't, I really believe that can't be open-ended. You know, I can't believe you can let the landlord say, I'll fix it. You need him, he needs to say, I will fix it by February 19th or, or whatever that date might be, but there has to be an end date. 
fine. Uh, I think it was difficult enough to find a spot date, but I'd be very happy. That's why it, it, this is not final. Uh, I, I just. I'd be very happy. My intent is to meet with them again, and we can put a finish date in there. I think you need to. I do too. My normal procedure is to put a start date in there and follow up to see what the progress is. Do you want a finish date? That's, that's, that's my vote. The April. Fifth. I've never had to do that before. But. Well, she's been waiting four years. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, well oh, understood. Understood. You didn't know that. Un understood. I, I'm not faulting you, Neil. I'm just saying, my experience, because I worked for the man. With what? I worked for that man. I think an end date is necessary. I do too. I agree. That's fine. I'm yeah, fine. Never had to do that, but I'd be happy to do it in this instance, if that suits the board. Is there a reason that the start, um, my understanding was the start date was April 15th, was that in that agreement? Why is, why so far away? It's a lot of it, you have to do outdoors, outside, and there's snow six feet deep around the building. I mean, sure, but I, I also do carpentry and construction and you can clear snow and you can do work in the winter so I'm just I'm just wondering if if you're living in conditions that are not reasonably to, reasonable to be inhabited in why give it such a long start date well generally when I get into these things you know my my beginning date has to be the first date I go there not and then, she, she's got a beginning date that goes back four years, which I wasn't aware of. So I, I just arbitrarily picked that date to get, get them started because I dealt with this person before and I know he's a little slow getting started. I'd be more worried about the end date than the start date. Uh, that, that's really a lot more realistic. Well, um, I think the board has expressed the, you know, that we need to get some end dates, the reasonable end dates, get some of these things done. And we'll, I guess we'll have to take a look and see whether or not we've fulfilled whatever the, you know, board of the health department wanted for information and, and get some of these things done for you. Well, I think maybe you, uh, I, I, if there's anything other than finish date that you want, you better tell me because I'm not, we're not, we're not going to go through this all summer. Oh, I definitely wouldn't. Uh, if, I don't want to. End date, if I would set the end date, it wouldn't be mm -hmm. through the summer. Right. And I know you don't want me in your house every Friday afternoon. I'm home every Friday. <laughs> <laughs> but you probably don't need me around. Coffee's always on. <laughs> is the property inhabitable, really? Is, is the what? property inhabitable? Oh, yes. With uh, looking outdoors? With what? If you can look outdoors, I mean, we're starting to... That's not a very nice situation to live in. Let, let me tell you that... I don't know how many houses in Bethel you go in, but there's houses in South, right on South Main Street that are a lot worse than her. Well, then maybe we ought to do something about that. I mean, uh, something like that right. sounds to me like an immediate fix. Something needs to be done, even yes. even temporarily, um, immediately. Some sort of mediation done to where the floor is dropped and you can see outside. That's just unreasonable to me. Wherever the seal is leaking, you're going to have to go in and take the insulation out to make it correct. It's leaked in every room this past week. Both my kids woke up soaked. Our baby, his whole bed was soaked. It looked like somebody dumped him in a pool and placed him back in bed and he woke up. <clears throat> See, that's something that I would think needs to be acted on immediately. I mean, that's just a completely unsafe uh, I think, situation. I think we can make the direct, give Neil direction to deal with this. I'm not sure we can tell him 
end dates I'm comfortable, but as far as fixing the floor or the ceiling or whatever, that's what he's, he's got to do that. Mm -hmm. He's got to be made aware that if he hasn't got it done and at the end date, he's sub subject to a $100 fine for each thing that's not done. Each day. Each day. Now, I don't disagree with anything anybody's saying here, but you're not looking at this from a landlord's practical point of view. We have to look at it from a public safety point of view. I understand That's that. Our but you also, you know, we don't have a plethora of housing in, in Bethel. Now, if I were the landlord in this particular situation, there, there's two ways to resolve this issue. One of you really ought to put a whole roof over that door. You've got a, a ton of outside work. I, and I, I'm back to what I originally said. I pull it out and put another one in there. Or that the more likelihood is that this will happen. It will evict the tenant. The chief threatened to do the night you were there. Threatened to raise my and they rent won't have to a place to live. Bucks, to and he won't run anymore. Out. Now, am I doing them any good? So I do, I do think you probably have recourse with the law. We're not that recourse, but um, Vermont Law School has legal aid, and I think that probably pursuing that, given the circumstances, given the fact that you have documented and had multiple years of these conditions, you have recourse. We, we just, we're not in a position where we can really do anything. Neil's not even in a position where he can, he can do his steps with the state and with the inspections, but I actually think your your issue is bigger, and you've actually done yourself a service of documenting it. That y you should pursue this in a different way, which really would be through legal aid. And and you can Google you can Google it. It's through the Vermont Law School. Legal aid is literally what you would Google, and they have free services where people will help you with this. I, I think you're at a stage where it's beyond anything we can feasibly make better for you, but. But there are there are systems in our state that can help you and will help you, and it's not going to necessarily be you paying a lawyer to do it. They're going to do it, and it's you know pro bono work. Um, so I, I just think that yeah, I think we're hitting a place where as as much as we want to help, we can't fix it. Um, but I'm not sure I'm quite understanding all of what you're suggesting. That you do. Seek legal counsel uh, if if eviction has been brought up. She, she needs to know what her rights are, right? If, if, if she's pursuing her health and safety of her family and her landlord, instead of fixing it for multiple years, is threatening eviction and rent increases, she has legal recourse. And there are, there are people that are not the, the Board of Health and not the Select Board that can help her more effectively. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so that's all, I'm just suggesting that there are I other don't, venues. I don't suggest that normally. First of all, uh, I don't know whether they have most people that I get involved with have the ability to pay for an attorney. And you can, that, that gets pretty expensive. Right, and the Vermont Law School has legal aid, which is oh, yeah. pro bono. Uh, they do it for free. So I, I think that. Just exploring that is probably worth the time and energy. Yeah. Oh. Interest there. So, uh, what is the next step you want? Do you want to see some uh, a completed report? Yeah, wanted, Do you yeah, want to see? see I'd like to see the completed report and some end dates, some target dates for those items that you uh, singled out. all agreed on some end, some you know estimated end dates for completion of those those items there. Anything else? No, not at this point. As long as I see an end date somewhere. What? As long as I see an end date somewhere. That's yeah, that's what you just said. Yep. Right? You're not saying anything different than he's saying. No, nope. not last time I checked. And a report. <laughs> Now you want the whole full report. Complete report. Yeah, complete report. The whole report. The report's completed. Yeah, okay. 
but I want to meet with them. I, I wanted to meet with them. I'm not sure it's necessary now. Uh, well, the statute says you have to give both parties a quick report. Yeah. And if you could forward us a, a copy of it, too, that'd be good. I'm sorry? So if you could forward us, give a copy of it to Greg so he can disseminate it out to us, so we can take a look at it. Take it down to your office, get a copy of it, because I have a lot faster than me doing it one page at a time. <laughs> sure. Okay. Greg's got a copy of it down there. Oh, yeah, we'll get you. We'll, we'll get you scored away now. Uh, yeah, we'll do that for the next meeting. Yeah. Well, I, I in, 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 I'm going to say this I think this problem, uh, that now that I'm hearing more about it, that it's been in existence for four or five years, is one that uh, I, I, can't, I can't, in my own mind, find a amiable solution for it. Can you? That building, what he's got to do to it, to satisfy you. So bear that in mind, and I have to bear that in mind. These people may be without power. But not without recourse, and I think that's where. Well, they gave them recourse out the street. Um, they, tell me where you're going to find a three bedroom, two bath rental in Bethel for 450 bucks a month. Would you insure that place? Never would. Okay. Never. There. Never did. I mean, I always yeah, but I'm saying that that place, but I never would really insure the properties. I always insure the. No, home but home. if if would you insure that house if they came in and looking for insurance policy? No, for no. Seventy-three dollars a year. I I'm not going. And my commission is twenty percent. That's what I'm not. Get, I'm not, not getting at that, Neil. I'm, you've it's seen the place. Would you insure it? No. Okay. That's what I'm telling you. It's yep. Like 40 years I was in the business and I never went insured those buildings. I always wrote the liability company up there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So that's we'll what you need. We'll see you at the next meeting. Yeah. You got a second? Yes. I just got a question for you. What phone number will you give for him? What phone number will you give for Neil? Right. We go into executive session to discuss personnel issues. I second that. All in favor? So, we're going to make a motion regarding the deputy town health officer. I'm sorry, say that again. 
We haven't gotten it to it yet. Not quite there. It's a okay. motion for, well, they'll, they'll tell you. Um, so can I just, yeah. it, you're basically, it's a, it's a motion to accept the application and, and recommendation. You're making a recommendation to accept the application of Chris Jarvis for the position of, are you writing this down? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. To approve the application for Chris Jarvis to serve as deputy town health officer. How's that? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Town health officer. Deputy town health officer. Right. Yeah. Oh, you can't vote twice. And then if you okay, sign no, that, who did so move? I don't know. A mo moved. Mo. Yes, I know. Yeah. So moved. And then it will be signed as from as from Paul as deputy chair. Who seconded? I did. Okay. Meeting date. Okay, next on the agenda is the TROC, T -R -O -R -C, Town Plan Options. Everybody have a copy of the demo from Victoria uh, Litchfield? Yeah. 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 Yes, I'm sorry, I was behind there. Could you just, could you summarize this? I've read it couple times okay. and just struggled to understand. I, I understood the individual points, but I think the implication for the town as a whole. So, yes. So uh, some of the grants that we get from the state require that we have an active approved town plan. So because we're rewriting our town plan and it actually expires partway through that rewrite, which I'm thinking is going to take about a year or so, they're concerned that that, that middle time there that there's that we're open to or we just wouldn't be eligible for some grants right. okay. so they came up with three ideas as to how we would kind of bridge that gap um, and that's what's proposed here uh, i will tell you that they probably the most seamless way is just to readopt it because there's there's not going to be any changes to it you know they're doing that now but so that's what this does though is it outlines kind of three options that we that we have um and, and in the meantime in the interim here just and readopting it does not affect when they finish the new town plan. We will then adopt that. Option. Right. Okay. So it doesn't yes. affect. Not at all. No, it's like that. A bridge. that was a piece that I couldn't. Not at all. It, you would so just readopt it um, to whatever date certain you want, and then okay. as the, if the new one comes in, it just takes over for the old one. Got yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So the, the new one is due uh, before September twenty second. Right. Twenty. 2019. The town plan expires in September, right? right? So of we have 19. To have another one in place. Yes. So this would be a bridge between that and 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 then when they finish the new one, the which is contemplated to be sometime in 2020. I think it's May or September something. September 2020. Well, that's the adopt. Adopted in 2020. 2020. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So there's there's potentially a year there where there would be nothing. Right. And that's where we could right. get stuck yes. with some potentially legal things or losing well, property. Right. So, so you could, right, exactly, yeah. exactly. I mean, we do have some local ordinances which cover some of this stuff. Our zoning ordinance covers some of the issues here, but it's really for grants. Like the one I just wrote, the, the one for the skate park, required a town plan. It, re it requires a lot of references to that town plan, and it's got to be a, a valid adopted town plan. So that's what this does, just bridges that gap, and maybe you do it until the, you know, December 31st of 2020. Maybe you put a date certain or something like that. Um, and then, then this new one takes place. So that's really what this is. This, this is just uh, the three options that they thought were the, that made the most sense for us. I, I don't think an interim plan is really worth the effort at all. I, I really don't. Right. Yeah, yeah. So do we need a motion to select one of these? Is that the? Yes, yes. So we'd be we'd be adopting, readopting re yeah. tonight. Yeah, and the regional planning commission is the only one that would not accept it, 
but that for you know our Act 250 and things like that, it's it's going to be okay. We'll be all right in that case. And I'm not really contemplating any grants. I mean, it's hard to tell this far out, but I don't imagine there'd be anything that would that would be hindered by this. A motion for readoption of the existing town plan. So moved. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Okay. Yeah. All right. Seymour Road. Yes, so I got a call from uh, Randolph's town manager, Adolfo, and they are in the process of liquidating some of the roads. I don't know if that's the right word, but that's what I'm going to use. So, declassifying. Uh, declassifying. They're well, yeah, they're they're reclassifying and eliminating roads. So, um, we have a small piece here. We call it Seymour Road. I don't know. I've heard about 14 different names, but anyway, um, it's a road that actually starts in Randolph, and currently Randolph they maintain the entirety of this road. It's a class three road. Um, they do some minimal snow plowing, I think, not much, but they do a little bit of work to it. Um, at the end of this road is a camp, uh, just a seasonal camp, that I've actually talked to the owner and he's, you know, he's okay. But what Randolph is proposing to do is eliminate this road completely. So they're gonna throw it up. It will go back, it will no longer be a right of way, it will no longer be anything. It'll just go back to the landowners. That leaves us with this small point zero nine that's in our town. That's currently a class three road. And the Basically. camp is in our town. And the camp is in our town. Yeah, there are some other houses up there. Uh, I can't remember the road that this is off of. The main road is, uh, uh, starts with an S. Um, Spooner. 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 That's the main road up in, in Randolph that they're gonna keep. But this is a little, a little it wise off and goes down this road. So they're, they're proposing to completely eliminate the right of way, gone. There's nothing there. Um, that leaves us with our piece. What I recommend that we do with this, I've talked to the owner and he said he has no problem with it being reclassified to a class four because a class three, we technically have to maintain it and do some other stuff to it. We're not, we can't even access it without going through, through Randolph. Um, I would recommend that we reclassify this to a class four. I have talked to the owner and he said, that's fine, that's great. I have no problem snow plowing, doing whatever I have to do. All I have is a summer camp there anyway. Not a big deal. Um, so there is a process to do this. Anytime we reclassify a road, there's a public process that we have to go through, but I just needed to get some sort of an in indication from the board um, as to what they would like to do. You, you know, we can leave it as a class three, we can change it to a class four, we can eliminate the road. We can, you know, we can try that, eliminating the road as a whole and not having any sort of right-of-way through there at all. Um, I don't know if I would really recommend that because it's getting rid of right-of-ways is not always a great thing. How many abutting landowners are on this road other than the end of the camp? Um, I'd have to look. I've got the map. Did I give you? Yeah, so there's... Yeah, it doesn't have the parcel. I don't have the parcel map with me, Mo. I'll have to look. Because that would be... Yeah, and it's, well, and most of them are going to be in Randolph, but we've yeah, got, I'm just talking about on I'll have to look, my guess is one, maybe two, because he has the property at the end, and it's only that point zero nine piece of road there that we're reclassifying. Right. So it would be whoever's abutting those two, so uh, maybe a couple, I, but that's part of the public process. I mean, it may come back that we don't do it, but um, because class threes basically say that, that we're supposed to maintain them to a certain level, unless the board chooses otherwise, it, it's just cleaner to basically say it's class four. Exactly. It doesn't need to be a class three. Uh, and it's point zero nine, so the, the financial implications are minimal. And if it's a class three, how do we access it? Like From you say, Randolph. You have to go. But they're going to throw it up. They're going to throw it up. So yeah. we wouldn't have a road to even get yeah, there. Yeah, so it doesn't make any sense to yeah. go that route. So class four, keep the right of ways intact. And you can access it, yeah. I mean, that's that. Or again, you can get rid of the whole road. The the landowner, the one I talked with, he is not for that at all. He will scream bloody murder on that one. Yeah. Um, but it is an option, for sure, and not have a right of way through there at all. I'd probably leave it in class four. Yeah. yeah. So if that's what you'd like to do, 
I'd like to have uh, some sort of a motion, and I will start the ball rolling on that. Um, it is, again, it's a public process that we'll go through, but. Um, I make a motion that we authorize Greg to start a exploratory uh, mission and to uh, reclassifying the Seymour Road. That sounds good. Yeah. Works for me. How about that? We have a second. All in favor? Aye. So I work on um, getting just starting the process to declassify that that small piece of Seymour Road, 0 .09 miles, to a class from a class three to a class four. Okay. It's zero point nine nine. I know. I I just changed it on mine. I put another zero. Oh, okay. there. It's point zero nine. It's point zero nine. Oh, yes. Okay. So it's it's nothing. Gonna, it's point zero. Throw a baseball, yes. baseball kind of thing. Yeah. There, there must be a class. It is. It's road number 74. Okay. Yeah. On this first map, it should say that on there. This one you have here, Mo? Yeah, to see the 74 with a solid circle, that means it's a class 3 and it's road number 74. If it's a dotted circle, it's a class 3. Kind of like road number 8 there to the left. That's a class 3. So, anyway. So I'll start working on that. You know where Spoon Road is in Randolph, don't you? It's right yeah. there by uh, the gun shop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I think they're keeping yeah, Spooner, uh, but not the other one, this little one that comes off. Uh, ten. I, did, I don't work out on it, yeah. Used to be uh, Jackson's was out there first. Yeah. So but that was just a seven years. Yeah. Well, I worked at the last place all the way out of yeah. the boom trailer that. Uh, I've driven all the way through there. I knew it was fast. I can't think of his name. But anyway. Okay, we done with that. So next is uh, minutes and communication. So we have select board minutes uh, from January 14th. I move, move we accept the select board minutes from January 14th. As well. I would second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Constable's report. Mark was busy during the snowstorm. Yeah. It was nice to see him around during that. I mean, there wasn't a ton of traffic, but good to have somebody. But he can't pick up pe people speeding it. Right? <laughs> I, was a little, I was kind of scratching my head a little. Well, well, I was kind of hoping he wouldn't stop somebody out in the middle of that. <laughs> so I see somebody coming down Church Street. Uh, I don't know he came up and visited us when I got stopped. Yeah. I don't know who called him. But all of a sudden, he pulled me out. And as we were heading down the hill, he, come, he was right there at the top of the hill. Uh, working on a couple little things, but I'll get back with you on that. A couple little things with some, um, just revising some reports and stuff like that. So. Budget information. Got uh, a halfway mark. Yep. Boy, time flies. Uh, so, questions? But, yeah, questions, comments, concerns. Some of the ones I see, the, you know, the ones that pop up, pop out at you, the, like the tools. We knew, we agreed to that. We knew uh, that was going to happen. Yeah. Um, and we budgeted for that next year too. Some extras. What? How? What's the bridge material? So the bridge material. This is why you have a capital plan with your own capital funds and capital budgets over here, so that when you have all these high expenditures that are reimbursable, they're not shown in your budget. This is inflated big time because 80% of this is reimbursed. We will get this back from the state. So that 
25 is what we actually budgeted. Right. Okay. 198 is what the total project was. Then we had to pay an additional 100 and or 89,000 right here on highway rehabilitation. Oh yeah, okay, that's the bridge project. Yeah, but that's inflated because that's the in, we had to pay up front. Right. Right. So that at the end of the day, that number is going to come back down okay, to so 25,000 dollars. Right. So right now, it's, yeah, which is why in the future, what Teresa and I are working on is we have our capital expenditures and our capital projects are over here. They're separate mm -hmm. so that you can see that and it doesn't inflate these, these numbers at the end. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the 137 is not an accurate number at all. Mm -hmm. Not at all. And then uh, building repair for the town offices? Yeah, we had furnace that had problems. We've had... Um, what was it? Our tank had an issue. The biggest expense was the furnace. We had some major issues with that. It wasn't working right. Things were haywire. We had some electrical issues. Um, just a bunch of little things, honestly. Those were the main things. Um, and we've got in our capital planning, we will be putting money in there, hopefully, for some renovations yeah, to that we building. About that. Yeah. 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 But electrical and furnace were the two big items on the, on the town office. The, uh, I wasn't here in the meeting when the engineers from uh, Dubois and King said they had cut us a break, but here we are at 215 percent of our engineering charge. <laughs> I don't think they cut us much of a break. They didn't cut us. They didn't cut us anything. Like, good. Yeah. They cut us a break by giving us. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Can you? <laughs> the only other question, Greg. Bottom yeah. line, last figure on page eight of eight, at minus two eleven seven sixty five. What does that represent? Actual expenses of two eleven. That's the. Um, it says total all funds. Uh huh. So that's is that the bottom that's line? That's the difference. Yeah. So that's where we're at at this point. Do you have that page, Dave? Eight of eight? It's, a, it's eight of eight, right? It's the last page. It's the last page of the general fund. Seven of eight is the last yeah, page. Yeah, that's where we're at, but we haven't collected yeah. all taxes and all that, too. Okay. So I we're, we're okay. Eight. We're okay. Don't worry about it. We're okay. okay. Pay So you've got, yeah. It's just a, you got the two the number. <laughs> if that's, I didn't know if that uh, if that was a true minus or if that's. Uh, that's. She, yeah, I don't understand. She's tried to explain to me a couple times. Yeah. That's minus. what that is. That's your difference. Of, so your your revenue. Does she probably doesn't give you the revenue? No, she no. did. No, she did. Yeah. Yeah, but this. No, I don't think it's all the revenue, is it? Well, the revenue is coming in at three point zero six six. 58% of our revenue and our expenditures are at 2.8. So we're good. To the, we're good on the two. Yeah. Good to the two. Okay. And then you got sewer and water. I don't know if there's any questions about that. But. Uh, on that one, just something quickly. The... Um, You've got a line item for tools. Mm -hmm. uh, that's high because, again, that's a grant that we had to pay for up front that we will get that money back. And at the end of the day, it'll shake out. We had done uh, the trench box that we bought. Yeah. Uh, we had trench box and some other things for a passive grant that we had to pay for up front. And then it'll, it'll shake itself out at the end. That's, but that's why it's, it's overdrawn. It shows that high. It shows double what it's supposed to be because it's a 50-50 yeah. grant that we had and we just haven't. You know, it just doesn't show up here. It'll show up in the revenue part, but it doesn't show up here. Okay. Any more? <clears throat> any more comments about the budget? Okay. So we have um, a. Res oh no, we got. I'm sorry. We got conservation commission uh, minutes from the 15th. Comments or questions about that? Okay.
So now we have a, a resignation letter. Um, dear Mr. Jarvis, I respectfully ask that the select board accept this as my letter of resignation from the Solid Waste Advisory Board effective February 4th, 2019. It's been my pleasure to work with various Bethel representatives and I wish them well. Uh, Jen Bobble. So we'll have to get an ad, um, mm -hmm. get an ad going. Uh, we will. We'll do that right away. Yeah. You take care of that first, all right? Yeah, you got to accept that first. I yes. Do, I yes. Do the re accept the re resignation of the deck. Second. Okay. All in favor? Yep, I will. Uh, we'll get that written up tomorrow and get it to the paper. Just a side note. Right. On that solid waste, we went down to the dump Saturday, mm -hmm. and I, I feel pretty comfortable at how I sort my stuff. And they were throwing stuff left and right. Garbage. This is garbage. I said, wait a minute, it, it's a number two uh, plastic. Nope, don't count anymore. Fair I, I got, how, do, how do we know? I mean, my big point is, how do I know how to sort my stuff anymore? There's a, there, sh there should be a list there of what they accept and don't accept. Uh, they're having a lot of trouble now with a single stream of a lot of non-acceptable I thought that's what single stream was all about. Was they, they figured it out. No, they won't take styrofoam. You know, you, you, if you buy meat, it's got a uh, number, two, whatever the number is on that. The styrofoam, they won't take styrofoam. No. They, they have a website. That facility has a website. Yes, do. Does it have any of that information on it? Do you know? It should be. Yeah, I just, I've never. I guess I'll have to look at it because I was, I was, I was distressed because I, I, we try to be very careful. Well, yeah, I mean, Judy went through that last time. I think I mentioned that Greg, I went down there a few weeks ago and there was a line out the door of people who were waiting to do their recycling because you know, Wayne was there and, you know, sorting, he was actually sorting stuff out of people's, out of people's uh, bins. That if we get a next number of uh, stuff that's not to be in the center stream, they can reject it. It was getting a little contentious, too, I've got to tell you. Sure. The, to the tough part that. was then their, their, their garbage truck was gone, so then you, you could go in, and I'm ready to do all my stuff. And, Oop, no, you got to go up back. Okay. Yeah, the truck had a motor, I think, on when it was Yeah, it went down. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're, oh, we do have... We need a motion to accept this. What is it? Liquor license, uh, those years? No, you just have to sign it. You just have to sign it. I don't believe you have to make a motion to okay. it. You just have to sign it. Okay. So we'll just sign that. So the next is executive session to discuss legal matters. Legal matters, unless there's any other business come before the board. I move we're going to protect this session for legal matters. And a second. All those in favor?